Hi guys, welcome back. Today I'm going to be doing a video on a program called Linda, which you may be um, aware of. Um, it's a program that enables you to trace controls in FSX and uh, easily assign them to any of your switches in your custom cockpit. Um, Linda is particularly good at um, tracing controls whereby uh, the developer may not have used a standard FSX control. Uh, the standard FSX controls can be easily assigned in FSX as, as normal or using FS UIPC. Um, Linda sits in front of FS UIPC and is, um, in my view, uh, an, an easy to use interface that allows you to trace those custom controls and then assign them to your switch. Uh, I had a particular problem when I made my cockpit and started to assign all the controls that um, I realised that uh, some of the controls in the aircraft weren't in the list to assign and this is where they've used these custom controls. So if you've got an aircraft that has custom controls, this program is particularly good at tracing those controls, uh, writing a little bit of code and then um, assigning them to your switch. Now before we go on, I must say that I'm not a, a, a code programmer um, in, in fact, I, I, I had very little experience when I started my cockpit, but uh, with a bit of homework, I, I managed to learn um, the basics of the Lua code, which is uh, the code it uses, um, to get these switches going. So I'll explain that as, as we go along, and I hope it's useful to you if you've got a, a, an aircraft that uses custom controls. So let's get into it. Okay, so on the screen we have the main Linda program. Um, I'm assuming that uh, you've downloaded and installed Linda. <coughs> um, this is the main main page, and over on the right hand side you'll see greyed out at the moment Linda Tracer and Linda Editor. The Linda Tracer is what we're going to be using to trace is what's going on with our switch. <coughs> Um, and to see those we need to go into Setup Linda and click on Developer Mode which is down the bottom here on the left. So we've now got Linda Tracer and Linda Editor available. So we'll click on Linda Tracer and it pops up the Linda console there. Hopefully you can still see both. And on the left hand side of the, the main Linda page, <coughs> there's a whole list of local variables uh, under the heading Lua variables. Um, and these are all the custom local variables that the developer has used to operate various things in, in the aircraft. Now we're going to today look at the windshield heat switch. So if you scroll down, if you're lucky, and most, most of the time they're written in English, you can spot what is operating the windshield switch. In this case, the local variable call is there, and it's called ASD underscore switch underscore windshield one underscore EMB 100. Um, that gives us a clue that Carinado also used the same variable in the Embraer um, Phenom 100, uh, but that's an aside. <coughs> so what we want to do is start watching windshield number one to see what happens when we flick the switch in the virtual cockpit. So we click on it to highlight it. Over in the console down the bottom, we've got a list of things that we want logged. Um, because it's a local variable, we want to log Lua events down the left hand side there. So once we've done that, back over on this side, we need to start watching it. So we click start and it appears in the console in this white box, Lua variables watched. So we know we're watching the right one. So. If I go across to FSX, which I've got on another screen, and click the windshield switch, which 
sorry, log glue event has come off again. Just try that again. And it says watching resumed. So if I click the windshield switch on and now off, we can see up the top here the local variable ASD switch windshield 1 EMB 100 firstly had the number 1 put into it, entered into it and then when I flick the switch off it input the figure 0 into it so that's what we're going to use in our Lua code when we make the code to um, be able to assign the switch so we'll leave that there for the moment and we'll go across onto this side and go to edit and then Caronado Phenom 300 and then edit actions and here's the whole list of codes that I've written for my cockpit and under the heat and ice panel I've got windshield number one and here's the code that's required um, to operate that switch so it starts and ends with a function so you've got function written there and end so function there in blue and end in blue that encapsulates the function after the word function we have to call the function something in this case i've called it windshield one on and then these brackets after it uh, remembering that code is very syntax you have to be exactly right with your syntax um, and then the guts of the function is this and I've written ipc.writeLVAR and that's telling the function to write into that LVAR what I include in the black in the brackets so IPC write LVAR open brackets then I've got the name of the local variable that appeared in it in our console in inverted commas then I've got a comma and then one so I'm saying right into that LVAR that's the LVAR I want written to and that's what I want written to it so write one and end and those three lines is all you need to operate the on part of the switch below that is another three lines with the off part again I've named it windshield off IPC write LVAR so I want to write to that local variable and I want to write the figure zero which is what happened up here uh, and then end the function so six lines there gives us an on off switch basically so once we've written that in in the editor we can close the editor and when we go to joysticks and we'll go to an empty space and we right click on the joystick switch I'll go down to the Phenom module and the heat and ice panel and there is our windshield on and windshield off listed for us to assign to that switch now you can either do it like that if you if you um, flick a switch on your joystick or um, your cockpit that you're building it will bring up and it will automatically show you which switch is being operated and then you can assign the function to that switch so that's fairly fairly simple let's go back to Linda and we'll click on developer mode again I don't know why it doesn't hold it the previous versions it stayed on so set up Linda developer mode then we go to the tracer <coughs> right let's assume that when we look down this list we couldn't see it wasn't obvious which local variable is operating when we flick the switch so we don't we don't know for sure so what you can do is start all of these watching all of these variables 
Now what happens when you do that, this window will start filling up because there'll be quite a lot of stuff happening in the background even before you flick the switch. Um, other variables will be operated by the sim. So let's do that. Start all and then log lure events and you can see this window is continually scrolling and filling up with stuff that's happening in the background. So if we flick our switch in our virtual cockpit now to see what's happening it's going to get lost in amongst this lot. See where we want to hide all that. So if we click pause and then right click on each of these lines you get a little pop-up box that enables you to stop watching it. So just click on stop watching for each and every one of these lines. You've got to go right the way down the list and then click resume and you might you might again find more appear. So keep going down the list, stop watching, stop watching, down the whole list until when you press resume you don't see anything scrolling anymore. You then know it's watching all the variables other than the ones that you don't want and you can flick your switch and see again which, which variables being operated. Hopefully that makes sense. Now sometimes developers will use local variables, sometimes they will log, uh, use existing FSX controls and you can trace them too because there's a log FSX controls um, box down, down here. Um, and sometimes they'll use a combination of the two. So it might be using an FS control, FSX control and um, a local variable. And local variables can do various things. They can operate the visuals in the visual cockpit but not actually do anything in the sim. Um, so they, they, you might see two local variables. So one will be operating the visuals of the virtual cockpit and one be, will be actually doing the um, control of the, of the sim. So hopefully that uh, makes sense and um, it will give you uh, the idea of how you can trace what's going on in your virtual cockpit um, and get your cockpit um, finished. Okay so I hope you found that useful. One thing I will just add, um, I said at the beginning that um, I'm not a, um, a computer program, I'm, I'm not that good on code um, and I learned um, the Lua language purely to um, get this cockpit going. If, if, if you're struggling with the Lua language what, what I can suggest is going on to the AvSim um, Linda forum um, and you can download lots of different modules for um, various aircraft um, and you can have a look at those and, and, and see exactly the code that other people have written to get their aircraft going and you may even be lucky and find a module for your, the aircraft that you're uh, basing your cockpit upon but um, it's useful to look at those modules um, to get an idea of how the Lua code works for various things because obviously some things like the um, um, controllers for altering the altitude and um, things like that, the knobs, um, can get a little bit more complex but um, you can download those modules, have a look at them and uh, work out what other people have done and get an idea of how the, uh, the Lua code works. So anyway, I hope you have found the whole video uh, helpful and uh, hope it enables you to complete your cockpit. See ya!